Well, welcome. Um, this is the sixth day of an uh, intro to our programming course. We uh, have quite a bit of material uh, in front of us still. Uh, we are working our way through uh, material programming issues related to the major types of data structures in R, which are important, a foundation for writing any sort of pro programs, functions, and we're up to lists now. Uh, so today we'll talk about lists some more. We had um, last week or two weeks ago, I guess, we had talked about um, we had looked at some of the some of the text processing capabilities. Uh, but um, let's um, lists are very useful, as you'll see. Lists are a very versatile structure. You can do a lot with them. And so we're going to spend more time on them for that reason. Now, before we do that, though, it might be a good idea to take a look at my approach to the exercise from last week that we will extend um, one more time uh, into next week. Uh, this is a programming course, after all. So here was the assignment from last week. I gave you, I provided to you several functions that would uh, generate vectors. Uh, one was a vector maker for numerics. That is, it would, it, it would uh, return a vector of five numbers randomly from uh, one to ten. And the second one was a would return a vector of five letters, lowercase letters, and the third one would return five trues or falses randomly chosen in the body of the function that you see here. So the assignment for this week was to roll those three functions up, or three of your own if you had some that did the same thing, into one. And so that was part of it. The other part was to write a function that would create a matrix. And the, the matrix, creating a matrix is not hard. The hard part is randomly generating from 5 to 10 rows and 5 to 10 columns if the user calls your function without stipulating the number of rows and columns that they want. The requirement was to make these um, optional arguments, which means they have default values in the formal definition of the function. And uh, the other part that was a slight wrinkle was that the, 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 the numbers in the matrix, in the cells of the matrix, should be randomly generated integers between 1 and 100. This raises a couple of complications, as we'll see. So, the reason why I asked you to give this a try is, uh, one, you, you need to understand what these structures are, but two, we're also illustrating a general approach to writing programs, which is start with just the most basic, simple, fundamental task that you have to address, which is related to the, the overall scope of your task, and then build, build on that. So it's a tried and true, it's not a new strategy, it's an old strategy, but it works, especially with writing programs or building systems in general. So let's look at the, um, here is my take, here is one approach uh, to roll up the, the three vector maker functions into one and the trick is, the requirement was, when the function is called, it should randomly re return one of those three types of vectors, either a numeric, or an alpha, or a logical, but randomly. Well, so how do you do that? Well, we've been making use of sample quite a bit and uh, it works very well, so we will continue doing that. Hang on just a moment, please. So this is what we do. Okay, so 
the other wrinkle was they were supposed to be able to specify the length. And if they didn't, if they did not specify the length of the vector to be returned, it would be it would randomly return a vector that was somewhere between five and ten elements long. Okay, well, how do you do that? Okay, so there's one argument x, and you one way to achieve that requirement, to fulfill that requirement, is to give x the only formal argument. Here's our our function that we're defining. This is our user defined function, vector maker a value that uh, uses sample that will sample from uh, the set 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, just one of those randomly. So <clears throat> if this function is called and the person does not uh, specify a value for x, it'll default to this. And uh, so this meets that requirement. Then, OK, so then we go into the body of the function. Um, I use a, a, a good a, an approach that's used quite often. That is, I assemble a list within the function that has all of the elements that I'm interested in. So I build a list in the function. Everything in the function is invisible to the global environment. The global environment, that is what you see here in the workspace, is completely oblivious to what's going on inside the function. So it's kind of a secret room where you can do anything you want and it doesn't affect what's in your global environment. And so I build a list out of those three types of vectors. The first element of the list is a vector uh, sampled. You, it uses the value of x that's set up here as the length of the vector and it samples from the set 1 to 100, which was the requirement. The second element of the list is the, this number, x number of lowercase letters, and it samples from the object letters. And the third one samples x, same number, from uh, a logical set of trues and falses. The, the trick is, one trick or one consideration is what you're going to return. Now, so you need to return one of these three. One way to do this is to unlist it. The unlist function will take a list, and we'll look at lists quite a bit more today, and will flatten it. It will flatten it into a, into a vector if it can. So how do you return just randomly one of these three? Well, you can use sample again. And you could just simply, at this point in our list inside the function, the first element is the numeric, the second element is the alpha, and the third element is the logical. So in your unlist function, if you embed sample uh, with sample one from one of these three, that will achieve the requirement to return one of these types. Okay, so let's see if it works. And um, I didn't even, I did not follow my own advice, actually. This is, does not use the, the other ones, but it uses the same approach. That is, I, I draw from the body of each one. I use literally the body of each one, but I did not, I did not call the functions directly. Okay, so uh, actually I had in the first version of this, but I stripped it away. It makes it simpler if you, if you, if you do it this way. That is, there's fewer lines of code. So we load that up, and if you call vector maker, let's call it a couple of times with no argument. So there it returns five letters. Here it returns looks like 10 letters. Here we have six numbers between 0 and 100. Here looks like 10 trues, falses. So it appears to be working. It's randomly one of those three types. And it's uh, the length of each one appears to be the right uh, amount. If they specify a length, on the other hand, then the only difference is it will return uh, a vector that's always five long, but again, it's it's randomly 
excuse me, randomly selecting one of those three. And then finally, you can also override or just you're just replacing the uh, argument. If you if you call it with this argument up here, it does the same thing. Of course, that's just I'm just showing you that to illustrate it. OK, you could also have created this list. You could have called each one of these functions. And I um, can't quite remember why I, uh, I said modify. I didn't say use them directly, I guess. But uh, you could have just called each of these three functions here. First one there, second one there, third one here. And that would have worked as well. Okay, so Matrix Maker. Well, Matrix Maker, and in the assignment itself, I said you can, it's okay to use the matrix function inside the body. It's not an exercise demonstrating that you know how to create a matrix from scratch. It's an exercise showing that you know how to make it provide randomly from 5 to 10 columns and rows with numbers that are between 1 and 100. Well, how do we do that? Well, here's there's a couple of tricky things that happen when you try to achieve this. Um, you can use sample again, where in the function, so here's our user defined function, and we're using n row. This is our argument for the number of rows. And we just use the sample function, so it's going to be number of rows between 5 and 10. And then we use, we say n col, n columns, and that also is going to be uh, one number between 5 and 10. And then, so this will achieve returning 5 to 10 rows and columns separately from each other. The, the issue is, whatever data you're creating, constructing this matrix from, must be a perfect multiple of the number of rows and columns. If you try to create, for example, a 3 by 4 matrix out of only 10 numbers, you, you run out of numbers before you populate it. So if you don't know how many rows and columns it's going to have beforehand, that kind of puts you in a bind as far as making sure you have the right number of elements to sample from. Well, what you can do is just uh, use a number that is the, um, the lowest common denominator that will fulfill any combination of rows and columns. And what do I mean by that? Well, you must have uh, somewhere between 5 and 10. Well, you can forget about 10 because 10 is a multiple of 5. So it has to be... 5 times 6 times 7 times times 8 or 1520 if you use that as your set then you'll always have uh, it'll always be a perfect combination of whatever the number of rows and columns are and to make them between 1 1 and 100, all you have to do is sample from that set. But you must make sure that you replace them. The default is uh, replacement is false. The default with sample is that you, when you select one, you withhold it, which just simply permutes the original sample. You want, to, you want to allow for the possibility of selecting the same number again. Otherwise, you, you have to, because otherwise, if you try to draw 15,120, 15, then you're going to run out of numbers. You only have 100, so you run out of numbers after 100, and that's not going to work. Now, note that if you have a smaller matrix, 5 by 6, 6 by 8, you're not going to use all of these, and that's fine. It's okay to have too many numbers, but it's not okay to have too few. Okay, so anyway, if we do this, uh, 
uh, five is five five times six times seven times eight times nine, I believe. Okay, so if we do this, if we load this function in, and then we call it a couple of times, hopefully it'll work. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see what we're doing. So here's the call without specifying number of rows and columns. So that time it's a five by nine. This time it's a six by eight. This time it's a five by seven and so on and so forth. So it is randomly choosing between five and 10 columns and rows. And these numbers are all between one and 100 and they're different every time. Okay, so that seems to work. On the other hand, they can specify number of columns and rows if they want to. Here they say five columns, two rows. And so every time it's a five by two with different numbers populating it. 